Here is a simple question that has caused missed flights, ruined lunch plans, and confused travelers for over a century. If I tell you to meet me at 12 p.m., are we meeting for lunch or are we meeting in the middle of the night? Most of us instinctively say lunch, but think about it. P.m. means after midday and A.M. means before midday. So what is 12 itself? It's arguably neither. The truth is, the way we tell time is a strange, patched-together relic of ancient history. We use a system designed by people who didn't have mechanical clocks, didn't have light bulbs, and counted on their fingers in a way you probably don't. Today, we're decoding the invisible line that splits our day in two and discovering why we don't just count to 24. Right here in Simple Things, Surprising Histories. To understand why your watch resets every 12 hours, we have to travel back about 5,000 years to ancient Egypt in Mesopotamia. If you were to count on your fingers right now, you'd probably hold up one finger for one, two for two, and so on. You have 10 fingers, so you count in a base 10 system. It feels natural, but the ancient Egyptians and Sumerians had a different method. Instead of counting fingers, they used their thumb to count the joints or knuckles of their other four fingers. Take a look at your hand. You have an index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. Each one has three sections. If you use your thumb to tap each section, you get three, six, nine, twelve. Because of this simple biological quirk, the number 12 became the golden number of ancient math. It was perfect. It's divisible by 2, 3, 4, and 6. So when the Egyptians decided to divide up the daylight, they didn't choose 10 hours. They chose 12. So the Egyptians gave us 12 hours of daylight. But here is the catch. They didn't see the day as one continuous 24-hour cycle like we do. To them, day and night were two completely different realms, ruled by different gods and measured by different tools. During the day, they used sundials. As the sun moved across the sky, a shadow would track the 12 hours of light. But the moment the sun set, the sundial became a useless rock. For the night, they had to switch technology. They tracked the movement of special star groups called decans. They realized that during total darkness, roughly 12 of these star groups would rise and set. So the world ended up with two separate clocks, a 12-hour clock for the sun and a 12-hour clock for the stars. For thousands of years, these two systems never touched. You had a day first hour and a night first hour. It wasn't until the Greeks and Romans came along and mathematical precision improved that we started fusing them into one single day but we kept that awkward split right in the middle. This brings us to those two little letters on your phone screen, AM and PM. They are Latin abbreviations, and they're all about the sun's position. Imagine an invisible line running across the sky, connecting north to south, passing directly overhead. This line is called the meridian. When the sun touches that line, it is the absolute middle of the day. In Latin, midday is meridium. Everything that happens before the sun hits that line is ante-meridium, ante meaning before, a.m., and everything that happens after the sun crosses that line is post-meridium, post meaning after, p.m. It sounds perfectly logical, until you reach the exact second of noon. At exactly 12 o'clock sharp, the sun is on the meridian. It isn't before it, and it isn't after it. Technically, noon is neither a.m. or p.m., but clockmakers and legal systems hate ambiguity. So, over the centuries, we just sort of agreed by convention that 12 on the day side would start the p.m. cycle, and 12 on the night side would start the a.m. cycle. But it's messy. In fact, it's so messy that U.S. railroads in the 1800s caused accidents because conductors confused 12 a.m. and 12 p.m. To fix this confusion, the military, pilots, and most of Europe switched to the 24-hour clock. 1 p.m. becomes 13 o'clock, noon is 12 o'clock, midnight is 00. No a.m., no p.m., no confusion. 
And yet, for our everyday lives, we stick to the old ways. Maybe it's because we like the symmetry, a fresh start at midnight, a fresh start at noon, or maybe, deep down, we still feel that ancient rhythm, the difference between the time of the sun and the time of the stars. So the next time you set an alarm for 7 a.m., remember, you aren't just checking the time, you're using a finger-counting system from the Bronze Age, labeled with Latin from the Roman Empire. This was Simple Things Surprising Histories. If you enjoyed this journey through time, please click the like button and subscribe for more surprising histories hidden in plain sight. Thanks for watching.